Om Namah Shivaya 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 Om Adhikarna 4 Fulfillment of Desire Through Will Doubt In connection with the meditation based on the heart, it is heard from the Upanishad, should he desire the world of the manes, the manes become associated with him at his weir wish. Chandogya 821, etc. The doubt here is whether the mere wish is the cause of the appearance of the manes or it is the cause in association with some other factors. Opponent, as to that, although the Upanishad declares at his mere wish, still it is proper that in consonance with the affairs of the world, there should be dependence on some other factors. Just as in the world we become associated with our fathers and others as a result of our desire coupled with some other causes like approaching, so also it must be the same in the case of the liberated soul. It is only thus that nothing contrary to common experience has to be imagined. When it is said, at his mere wish, it is done so from the point of view of the easy availability of the other means that lead to the fulfillment of the desire, as it is seen in the case of a king. Moreover, the manes and others who follow the dictates of one's desires will be as unsteady as the other things fancied by the mind, so that they will not be able to provide sufficient enjoyment. Vedantin, this being the position, we say, Sutra 8, Sankalpa deva tu tatrute tu but Sankalpa eva from volition alone tatrute because such is the Upanishadic text. Translation The fathers and others come as a result of the will alone because the Upanishad says so. The contact with the fathers and others comes about owing to the will alone. Why so? Because the Upanishad says so. For such Upanishadic texts as the manes become associated with him at his mere wish, Chandogya 821, will be compromised if other causes have to be relied on. As for the other factors, they may well be there if they come in obedience to his will. But no other means that requires an additional effort can be admitted, since in that case the volition will remain infructuous till the other factor comes into play. Moreover, in a matter to be known from the Upanishad, any general argument based on empirical experience has no application. Besides, the will of a liberated soul is different from any ordinary will, so that through the force of their mere volition, these manes and others can remain steady for as long as the occasion demands. Hence, this occurs through volition alone. Sutra 9 Ata eva cha cha and Ataha eva for this very reason Ananya adipatihi without any other lord to rule over. Translation, and for that very reason, a man of knowledge has no other lord to rule over him. For that very reason, just because his will cannot be infructuous, the man of knowledge is without any ruler, that is to say, none else can rule over him. For even an ordinary man who desires something does not wish that he should be dominated over by somebody else so long as he can avoid that. The Upanishadic text also reveals this fact in, again, those who leave this world after realizing the self and these true desires get freedom of movement in all the worlds. Chandogya 816. Namaste. So, the liberated soul in the spiritual world has true desires, according to Chandogya Upanishad. 
In fact, the whole eighth discourse of Chandogya is well worth looking up and reading because it gives the whole context of leaving the body, going on the path of the sun, attaining the spiritual world, and then what the soul's existence is like there. Basically, only true desires are satisfied. See, in the material world, everything is false. Even our desires, because we are desiring objects that are not the self. They're impermanent, always imperfect and unsatisfactory, and so our desires are never really satisfied. Or even if we get the thing that we think we desire, that, that we think we want, then we find out that either it's impermanent or it's imperfect. or it, There's always some complication, always some problem. But in the spiritual world, that's not so. Because, remember, two sutras ago, the liberated soul's qualities are exactly like those of Brahman. So anything that he desires is immediately satisfied. Not only that, <laughs> the objects which are desired, such as the different realms or lokas in the spiritual world and the different forms of Brahman in the spiritual world, and the pastimes that occur there, the ecstatic, wonderful, loving, amazing pastimes, these are all real things. Well, relatively real, because they last for the entire duration of the universe. So, in other words, those things can be desired and can be attained and are attained by the liberated souls and they do satisfy because they are permanent, at least, you know, as, as permanent as the universe is. So what are we doing messing around in this material world, which is always disappointing, uh, where there are always complications due to karma? where everything is actually unreal because it's temporary and it soon falls apart and disappears, you know, the, and the substance of it turns into something else, huh? like a clay pot. We've used the example so many times. Clay pot is fashioned from the clay found in the ground. But then, only as long as it holds that form is it useful or is it considered, you know, a pot, a thing, a separate identity from the clay because of its function? Then when the pot breaks, that function no longer works. And we, we throw it. it. Now it becomes garbage. <laughs> and it goes back into the earth from whence it came and again becomes clay. But actually, it was clay the whole time. We just didn't notice because we had applied this new label, pot, according to its function. So in the same way, in the material world, there are so many objects, and they appear to be, you know, pots, tables, cameras, uh, <laughs> lights, you know, stuff like that. But all of them are temporary. Therefore, they are not real things that can be desired. Because just like the pot, they are made up of other materials, earth, water, fire, air, and space. And because of that, they decay, and eventually they disappear and transform into other things. So these false things can never give the satisfaction. But everything in the spiritual world is conscious. Everything is alive. Everything is intelligent and responsive because everything is Brahman. So when we desire something in the spiritual world, 
we are desiring Brahma, the self. So it's permanent, satisfactory, and self. Huh? Atma. This is the difference. How can we start? By desiring enlightenment itself. By desiring the knowledge that leads to enlightenment. Brahma Vidya. And by performing the actions that lead to enlightenment, which is sadhana, puja, and meditation. When we do this, we can attain enlightenment. And, and to attain enlightenment is like the first real desire we can have. Once enlightenment is attained, then there are so many more real desires, like the desire to interact with one's ishta devata, or uh, how can I say, core favorite form of God. And this is forever. That love relationship with God is so ecstatic and so pleasing and satisfying that one who realizes it loses a desire for pale, temporary, unsatisfactory objects and is satisfied with that love alone. That is the key. One of the things about the material world is that when the body becomes old and decrepit, at some point one actually desires to die. So we do. <laughs> we die, we go on, we take another body based on the impressions that we're holding in the mind at the time of death, which give us the uh, range of karma and so forth that we're entitled to in the next life. And then we again experience these unsatisfying desires and, and objects. And so this goes on and on. This is samsara. And it's a lot of suffering. So to get out of this suffering means to cultivate the true desires. Desires that actually lead to enjoyment that aren't disappointing. Uh, that are real because they're permanent, or at least as permanent as the whole creation. And with knowledge of Brahman, even at the end of the creation, we're not disturbed because we have already realized Brahman and we simply merge into Brahman at the end, knowing that we'll come out the other side, you know, in the next creation. So what is the problem, you know? The problem is we are desiring the wrong things. We are desiring things within the range of this material world, which is itself illusion. Maya means it doesn't really exist. Ma, ya, doesn't really exist. So instead of desiring Maya, we should desire Brahman, because Brahman is real existence real consciousness without any covering upadis and real bliss that is permanent happiness. That's the difference. And when we do that, we taste that permanent happiness ourselves. So this draws us further into the relationship with God, which is just a form of Brahman, you know, and then when we reach the spiritual world, all of our desires are automatically satisfied, immediately. So this is what we have to look forward to. And this is the key to transcending suffering in life and even suffering of death and turn death into a victory that leads to the satisfaction of all desires. Aum Tat Sat, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya.